Check, check. Hi, everyone. Oh, the speaker's on. All right, I'm the last thing between you and your lunch, so I'm, I have lots to share with you, so I'm going to make it quick. I hope I do not pronounce things too fast. I will be here all weekend if you have questions and things like that. And uh, I'm going to um, push forward on, on what Zach said. I'm going to t talk about components. Um, I'm going to talk about how to reuse components. I'm going to talk about how we can optimize responsive layout in components. And I'm going to talk about the things that we used to do to do opt optimal responsive layouts, like media queries and configuration options. Yes, I am at a JavaScript conference, and I am going to talk about CSS. <laughs> Thank you. Um, my name is Martin. Uh, and I'm a front-end developer and developer advocate at I.O. We're, we're all over Europe. Uh, and the thing that I like to do most at I.O. is share my thoughts and share other people's thoughts. Um, share experiments that I made or other people made on how the web platform is moving forward and how CSS the last two, three years is moving forward with breakneck speak, speed. And one of these experiments I, li I like to show my peers is uh, creating a dashboard. So I'm currently in the renovating uh, phase of a house. And of course, I want to automate all the things in my house. And to automate things, I need some sort of dashboard. I need an overview where I can, for instance, have a bar chart that shows how many pies I have eaten the last year, and a pie chart that shows how many candy bars I have eaten in the last year. And of course, before I leave the house, I have to know what kind of weather is out there. And I need to create a weather widget. So the goals for, I think, each of these widgets has to be that as a user, if the widget becomes larger or smaller, I want to see more or less information. And on the dashboard page, or actually on each page, I want to resize the widgets. And as a developer, just like Zach said, I want to reuse the same component throughout my page and throughout different kinds of layouts. Like the weather widget. When I enlarge the weather widget, I want to perhaps, because I have the space available, also see the expected precipitation or um, the temperatures of the upcoming days. So how? in 2015 might we do this using media queries. So on the dashboard page, when we are uh, trying to create a, a responsive layout, we're going to use media queries um, to set the size and uh, on certain breakpoints differenti differentiate the, the styling. But then I want to reuse that widget on a different page, and I have to, again, write more styling and more breakpoints because yeah, the, the weather widget looks different on that page. And then another page, uh, no. And then uh, I want to combine those, that code together. Well, I need some sort of modifier in my, in this case, classes to make sure uh, each weather widget on each page is the perfect layout. And then another page comes, and I have to write more code. And another page comes, and I have to even write more code. And that's, although I love CSS, I do not want to repeat myself, and I do not want large files. Um, so, so in this case, media queries give us insufficient flexibility, because they only allow us to query the viewport for its dimensions. Well. Let's think, let's think a little bit further. What if we could give the widget some configuration options, like properties or attributes? So in this case, I gave the weather widget a size large. And with CSS, I'm saying, OK, if it has this variant, then do some different styling for this weather widget. But then responsive design comes back, and I have to insert breakpoints. And then. All the other layouts come back, and now we're facing an nth problem because we have to combine the breakpoints and each variance. So the configuration options 
gives us, uh, still puts us in some constraints. And the end user is still responsible for the correct styling. I cannot, as an author, give the perfect styling automatically to the, the people that want to use the weather widget. And the end user has to implement their own layout logic. Well, we could use some JavaScript to solve the problem, maybe. Yes, um, there is a thing out there that co that's called the resize observer. And with the resize observer, we can say, hey, this element on the page, please uh, watch if the dimensions change. And if it does so, do something. Like, for instance, if the, the width of this element is larger than uh, 640 pixels, then add a class or either remove a class. But then we could have layout shift. And like Zach said, if we properly load in our HTML, CSS, and our JavaScript as late as possible, well, then we could have a layout shift. So to give an example, first our page is empty, then our HTML and CSS is evaluated. And after that 500 kilobytes of your JavaScript is loaded in, well, then the layout starts to shift, and our users get annoyed. And that's not something that we want, right? So we need a solution in CSS. And luckily, since mid-February, since I believe Valentine's Day, all major browsers now have support for container queries. <laughs> <laughs> all right, container queries. Who here already knows what container queries are? OK, and of those, who has pushed container queries already to production? Ooh, ooh, all right. <laughs> nice one. <laughs> cool. Um, so what's in the browser now? There are three main areas, three main feature sets of container queries that are already in the browser. Size container feature, container relative units, and style container features. Let me take you through them. So size container features is the thing that I think components uh, authors have been wanting for over a decade now. It's media queries on elements. Uh, what do we have to do to use container queries? Well, first, we have to point out to which container we want to know, uh, we, to which we want to query its dimensions. And we do that by setting the container type. So in this case, I have a product, and the container type is size. And this means that I could query for both its x-axis and its y-axis, but I could also set the value of container type at to inline size. And if I set it to inline size, I can only query its x-axis. And if I set it to normal, I can disable the element as a query container for container size queries. More on that later. And how do we then query the element? Well, it's like, uh, uh, a media query, but using the container word, so at container, and then have that conditional written there. In this case, if the inline size is larger than 400 pixels, well, let's do something. If we set the container type, we can query for the width, the height, the inline size, the block size, because we have width and height, we can calculate the aspect ratio or use uh, the orientation, uh, an orientation value like landscape or portrait. And of course, if we only have inline size, we can only target or query for the width or the inline size. We can write single conditions. We can write multiple conditions. And we can target multiple containers. So with container queries, uh, media queries limited us to one element or one viewport to query. But now we can have several elements on a page that we can query for its dimensions. So we need the possibility to target the element that we want to query. And in this case, oh, I'm gonna let me go back. In this case, we have a page, we have a product list, and we have a product. The page has a container type of size, has a container name of folder, which is some abstract synonym I'm found on synonyms.net. Um, product list which has container type inline size and the container name of lists. 
And the product has two container, uh, has two container rules. The first one, we say add container and then target container name folio, which targets the page selector, does some conditionals and does some styling. And the second one, the product list, or the second container rule will target the product list, which has a container name list. And if you don't want to write uh, two different properties, well, there's the container shorthand, which allows you to have the container name, a backslash, and the container type. And just like before, we can target the same, same way. Now, you might already notice that I have set, always have set containers on a parent of a, an element. So that's one of the requirements of container queries. We have to set containment on an ancestor of an element. Uh, a, a, container, a query container itself cannot query their own dimensions. So this example does not work. We always have that parent-child relationship. Some examples, yay. So this, because this is in browsers, I can show real life code pens on stage. And this example by Amit is a, is a cool one. Marketing wants newsletter signups on each and every page. And luckily with container queries, we can now write one component and reuse it automatically on each and every layout. So in this case, we have a fully vertical stack and the more width we gain, the more horizontally stacked this component will become. Another example that I think is cool, because I made it myself, no, I don't know, um, is uh, the shopping cart. So on the shopping cart, you have this overview of each product you're about to purchase. And um, I made a web component out of this. And yay! <laughs> and um, shows the image the title, description. I even chose to have some business logic, some calculations in JavaScript. Yes, I did that, don't sue me. Um, <laughs> and on the upper right hand of this page, um, or most e-commerce websites, there's a little, little card icon which shows you how many products you're, you're in, you have in your cart. Um, and I thought, well, that's the ideal opportunity to reuse this component and have maybe all the business logic in there. Um, it's not sharing state or something, but it's just to point out, I have one component, I can use it as a huge version on the main page, and I can use it a little small version on um, other places that I want to. And we can even use container queries to have responsive SVGs to have responsive images. Now, Sarah Dresner pointed out a few years ago that if you use an SVG in an image tag, well, then you can um, have responsive SVGs by itself. Well, I like to use my SVGs inline or as an SVG sprite. And because we can write style, styling in the SVGs, well, we can also use container queries now. So at a certain breakpoint, the, the outline of this beautiful stegosaurus will, uh, will disappear. And the same goes for the diplocatus, but on a different breakpoint. It's a simple example, but it allows us to create responsive logos, perhaps. If you have lots of vertical space, well, then the logo could be vertically stacked. If it has lots of horizontal space, we could have uh, horizontal stacked logos. So all contained within that same SVG file. So one SVG to rule them all. So support, we we're on 92% uh, in Romania, we're on 87 in, uh, in, 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 in Belgium. But if we filter on the lar larger than 1% usage, well, we're all good there. So if you haven't shipped container queries to production yet, I my opinion, you should, it's the right time to do so. All right, units. I have to go a little bit faster because I'm running short. Um, so units. You have viewport container units, uh, viewport relative units, units that 
uh, take a percentage of the dimensions of the viewport, well, now you also have container relative units that take a percentage of the container's size. You have one for width, height, inline size, block size, and you, you have min and max, which is either the smaller value or larger value of in the width or height. Let me give you an example. We have this, again, a product page. This is all the same uh, CSS, same product, same uh, CSS components. And we can see that the titles are sized according to the size of the product card. And when we do the old accordion trick, well, then we see the titles also, and the prices also resize with the, with the product. So responsive fonts, y'all. And this has been released with container size queries, and also it's, it's ready for production. The last one I want to show you is uh, style container features. With style container features, uh, if we set the container type or normal or just do nothing because style container features are actually enabled by default on each element, um, we can uh, target or query for computed styles. For instance, this product body will check if the product has uh, a red background and do something. But it also allows us to have conditionals in CSS, if statements in CSS. What? Programming in CSS? Yes. So, we have two sections here to, to, to explain it to you. We have two sections here. One has a list that should be blue. One ha has a list that should be red. On the last section, I've put a with list visible. Now, in my CSS, I have a custom property with the value of false. On the with list visible, I set that custom value on true. And in my list, I default this not, will not display it, but I will query for if visibility is true and then display it. And what we see is that we only see the red list. Is this does anybody grasp this? <laughs> so because I overwrite the with list visible uh, the, the, the value here, my list will listen to because thanks to the cascade, it will list to list listen to uh, what's coming in and okay that, that property changed so I can change uh, I could act accordingly. And one other experiment I tried to create in there is uh, an overview page. So some dashboards or websites have an overview page and allow the user to choose either between a, a table or a, a or a grid view, just like Finder or Windows Explorer does. And just by uh, setting a single custom property um, and uh, querying for that custom property in, in the elements, I can shift from a table to a grid quite easily. You might think, oh, I could use a class for this. Well, well then you're messing with specificity. Uh, with this, you're not. You're just stating, you're using, you're not. Point, let's continue. <laughs> What's, uh, <laughs> what, can we use style queries? Not really. Um, they're in development. Um, you can use style queries in Chromium browsers currently, but you can only use them with CSS custom properties. So we're not there yet, but exciting future ahead. So waifu, or what's in it for us? Instead of writing all of this CSS, or giving the, responsibly, the responsibility of uh, writing all this CSS to your end user, we can encapsulate the the encapsulate the, um, uh, the, 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 now I lost it. We can encapsulate the CSS concerning the dimensions uh, within the, the components styling and have far less code. And if we take it a step further and use conditionals, we can even have some sort of orchestration um, and, and keep all the dimensional 
container queries on one element and have a sort of feature flag in CSS using style container queries. So kind of a workaround for having variable uh, breakpoints within CSS. Uh, this always happens. Until we, and that means that we can have a reusable weather widget that styles correctly everywhere or according to the space available. So that's the power of container queries. <laughs> so let me wrap it up. Um, container queries, we can encapsulate adaptive styles and uh, I think it's an excellent addition for modular front-end architectures. They're supporting major browsers for size container queries, for container relative units. We have partial support in Chromium browsers for style queries. If you want to experiment, uh, if you already have experiments, please share them with me. My socials are on my website, mrtnvh.com. And with that, I wish you all a very peaceful day. Thank you very much. Woo!